Last time we found Sleeping Beauty in the dungeon. Let's see what we discover this time. Good morning, I trust that you made up your mind. Will you collect the souls I've asked for or would you prefer to stay stuck in this festering swamp? All right, all right, no need to get your horns in a twist. I'll do as you ask. You haven't given me much choice. Splendid, as it happens, I already sensed the first four souls we seek. Could you be more specific? Near a shapely stump? Perhaps inside a tree with a face? By an overgrown mushroom grove? What do I look like? A compass? Go out there and look for yourself. Got it. Into the darkness we go. Okay, so it still looks like the only path that's really open for us is the forest. Oh, the little dog wolf is here. I wonder if he's still as angry as before. Hi, little puppy. Oh, no, still mad, very mad. I'm just gonna see what you have in there. I'm gonna gather ingredients just to make sure we have everything. There's a crying lady, a weeping maiden, a pretty sad looking woman. Humble basin, once perhaps part of a lovely plaza, now little more than a bird bath. You approach a young woman weeping sorrowfully in her palms. She catches her breath for a moment and looks out longingly over the placid lake. Oh, my sweet songbird, why have you forsaken me to a life devoid of your love? tears well up in her eyes as she buries her face once again. You consider leaving this melodrama well enough alone, but something about the poor girl reminds you of the maiden slumbering under your house. You draw out a tattered handkerchief and offer it to the maiden. There, there, dry your eyes, my child, and tell old granny what the matter is. Oh, thank you, you're so very kind. She takes the cloth and daintily dabs the corners of her eyes. Swallowing the last of her sobs, she composes herself before sighing wistfully. It's my beloved, such a sweet and romantic man with a voice of a meadowlark. Ah, I get it. He dumped you. Well, don't worry, there's plenty of other frogs in the swamp. What? No, he loves me and I him, though our families would never allow us to be together. He'd come and sing outside my balcony every night. One night, we both vowed to escape and meet by this lake. Her lip quivers. I waited and waited under the waning moon, even past the morning sun, but he still didn't reveal himself. Tough break. Maybe he just wasn't that into you? The woman snaps at you with sudden vitriol. He would never abandon me. We were destined to be together. She slips back into a melancholic gaze out over the lake. Even now, I can still hear the beautiful melody of his lute coming across the water. Over the dull sounds of slapping waves and quaking waterfowl, faint notes of some faraway string instrument whisper through the reeds. Oh, I hear it too. Maybe you aren't just mad in love. It's coming from somewhere in the middle of the lake. He's out there somewhere. I just know it. She crumples into another dramatic bout of inconsolable tears. I'm sure it's just some echo bouncing off the shore. I'll go find where this tardy bard of yours has run off to. All right. So we're gonna find the crying lady's uh, lover boy. Ew. Oh, I was about to call them goblins. They are goblins. Talk's big, but is cowardly at heart. Oh, <laughs> how evil are you? Nope, the goblins are chasing me. Okay. Oh, goblin. No thanks. Um... Quick question, what are you? Would you attack me? Oh yeah, you have, you're evil. Okay, great. Evil trees, evil goblins. Let's go this way. Oh, who are you? A quartermaster. Oh, hello there, S sorry. I think I managed to get most of the debris off the road. Looks like you've made a fine wreck. What on earth happened to your cart? Uh, yes, well, you see, I was sent on a very important mission by order of my captain the bear the bear you say what sort of mission it's my job to make sure the lakeshore camp is well stocked with provisions but most importantly a steady supply of honey for the bear's favorite mead i was just on my way back from the apiary with a cart full when a deer or something just started out of nowhere jostled my poor mule so bad that she broke her bridle and ran off my own heart nearly leapt out of my rib cage piled that darn cart right into the ditch she did now every barrel is smashed and I can't bring myself to report back empty-handed. The bear will have my good guts for garters, I'm sure of it. This bear sounds like quite a brute. Oh, you don't know the half of it. If he doesn't get his honey mead, he, heads will roll. Uh, maybe you could lend me a hand? I can't very well put this broken cart back together. No, no, nothing like that. But could you take a message to the sergeant of Le Lake Camp Shore? He's a reasonable fellow. L let him know what happened and maybe he can get me out of this bind. You can get to the Lakeshore Camp if you follow the road to the northwest of here. I need to stay with the cart and assess the damages. Oh dear. It's a northwest. Uh, 
Let's go that way. What's up, dude? Um, let's go this way, see what we can find. Lakeshore path. Okay, that sounds good. Unenthused sentries. A pair of soldiers blocking the way, but not entirely happy about it. Oh my. Okay, looks like a big battle happened there. Uh, what's up, guys? Let me in. Oh, dingus. Hey, where do you think you're going? Dongus. Dingus and dongus. Great. Get out of my way. I have urgent news of your quarters, masters. I need to speak with your sergeant. Urgent? Only thing that's urgent is the line for the latrine, or if the captain hasn't had his drink. That's right. Captain Bear is in a right foul mood. You can't come in unless you want a good thrashing. The guard almost has to shout over the clattering din coming from inside the camp. You heard him, it's dangerous in there. Wouldn't have the heart to let a frail old granny like you near that beast. One guard turns to the other with a conspirational shrug. Yeah, but who are we to say that's what's good for her health? Oh, yeah, you're right. We might be convinced to uh, look the other way if we were fairly compensated. Right, fairly compensated, of course. We'd be sticking our necks out after all. The guards hold out their hands expectantly like children begging for candy. All right, take the coins. There, I expect you two can divide them evenly amongst yourselves. Right, one for you and two for me. What? You mean two for me and one for you? I'm the one who does all the real guarding around here. You still owe me for that game of dice you lost. You cheated me. Give me them coins. The two guards fall into a fist of cuffs and roll into the bushes, leaving the gate for the camp wide open. Oh, he's very angry. Unknown weaknesses. <laughs> I see why the guy is scared. Amending poultice. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> as you cautiously approach, the bear drains the last of his enormous tankard and smashes it against the head of a nearby soldier, and he knocking the hapless man to the ground. And then I walloped him just like that, so next time I catch any of you cowards turning tail, I'll skewer you like a fish and leave your guts for the gulls. Suddenly noticing that his drink has gone dry, the bear bellows to the skies. More mead, you yellow-bellied worms. More drink. Bring me my delicious honey mead. The soldiers take in cover nearby, exchange nervous glances at each other, none wanting to confront the bear. There is no more honey mead. The bear wipes a strand of drool from his sagging lips, and his bleary eyes focus only on me. No. A mocking smirk splits his face as he waves at you with his great spiked mace. Say, now that's a funny looking helmet, soldier. I ever tell you the time I crushed the bucket-headed barbarians of the western mountains? You decide that now is a good time to leave the bear to his ramblings, rather than make yourself an unfortunate prop for his war stories. The bear kicks an empty tankard at you as you retreat into the camp. That's right. Go get me more mead, you good-for-nothing slaggard. Hey, at least you didn't bash our head in, I guess. Ah, sergeant. The frenetic-looking officer shouts hurried sol orders at whoever will listen, but most of the camp soldiers are busy cowering or knocked out cold. Man the gates! You, over there, secure the perimeter! We just need to hold out a little, a little longer. Sir, we're running out of men. Where's the damn shipment of honey? You step over an unconscious footman to address the man in charge. I might be able to answer that question. Who the? Who let this old bat into the camp? I found your quartermaster. He's having a bit of cart trouble on the road. I'm afraid your shipment isn't going to get here anytime soon. What? Oh, curse my rusty britches. Without that honey and other supplies, we can't make the honey mead. The bears get a flat in the whole camp when he finds out. The camp looks half flattened already. What's all this ruckus about? Well, the bear is the greatest warrior there ever was, which is grand, and all when we're fighting the enemy. But once we set up camp, he likes to use us poor sods as playthings to reenact his conquests. And the only thing the bear loves as much as fighting is drinking. Guzzles up so much honey mead, we have to brew it right over here in camp just to keep it up. He points to a squat looking device tucked near some tents, a portable brewery. Without that shipment, oh no, I skipped it. Let me take a look at this brewery of yours. If the bear isn't so in love with brawling and boozing, then perhaps it's time he received a dose of his own medicine. So let's see what's happening with his brewery. You inspect the brass contraption, a tank here, a hopper there. The bitter smell of alcohol is infused into the well-worn metal. Despite the needlessly complicated dials and tubing, at the end of the day, the brewery is really just a fancy cauldron. This seems simple enough. I should be able to concoct just the potion for your troubles. The rattled sergeant shrugs his shoulders at you. Sure, if you think it'll help, but you'll need to fuel this darn thing first. Our supplies are a mess, so you'll have to figure it out on your own. You open up the brewery to expect his innards. Got it. Okay, so we have the twigs. You snap kindling in there. Okay, what else do we need? Well water. How do we make a cinder block? Oh, we need to go get another firefly. 
Okay. And then jars of water. Back to the forest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna grab a few more of everything, just in case somewhere down the road we're gonna need 50 fireflies or something. Okay, so we got all of that. Um, I don't know if we need the frog, but maybe we do. Got it. Can we make the jars, the empty jars? And let's go fill them up with water. So we need to get the water. Okay, so let's grab you. Four and five. Don't believe I need anything else from here so we can just go up. And then let's see. The other thing that we needed was to make this thing, which we can craft now. Good, so we have the cinder box. We have already put in the wood that we need for this. And we have the five jars of water. Lakeshore path. That's a brave soldier walking right by the bear. Okay, so let's get this fixed. Let's put in the jar of water and uh, the cinder box. Of course, I'll need honey for the mead. That quartermaster said he was coming back from the apiary in the field, so I best try there. Then I'll need a proper magical binder and the token of the bear to seal the spell. Something in this camp ought to do the trick. Ooh, okay, so we need honey, we need a metamorphosis elixir, and a torn teddy bear. Oh, we can go in here now. A protective talisman. Oh, there's so much to make. Okay. Okay, so I think the first thing we can easily get is the honey from the farmer. Um, all right, sir, can I have honey? Inquire at the apiary. Oh. Oh, sunflowers. I love sunflowers. Are you evil? Unknown weaknesses. Oh, that thing is mean. Do they have a weakness? Snag vine. And a logger's hatch <laughs> will not touch the pumpkins. Oh, why is everything evil? Help me! Oh my gosh, ow. Good day, Tia. Your evil goblin freaking attacked me. Ah! Oh, you're evil too. Okay, of course. It's a cow. An empty jar. Oh, we can get milk. Hello, cow. Thank you. I know we just met. It's the first thing I do. <laughs> An odd farmer, not given to conversation, it would seem. Okay. Oh, nice. If we do the bear stuff, we need to get a metamorphosis elixir and a protective talisman. A wicked gemstone for dog hair. And then a wicker work. So we can make that. Ugh, so it looks like we're just going to be going back and forth a lot to get to where we need to go. Um, Let's try up there. Ah, evil goblin. Oh, into the swamp. Perfect. The tempting forest path. Yeah, I am tempted to go back. Um, so how does this work? Ooh, I see. I <laughs> oh, we went through there. Mmm, nice. Let's grab these salts. I feel like they might be important for something. We should get the bugs since we made the little um, smoker thingy. Hold on, was it a hatchet that I go in with? Yeah, okay. Can I smoke them and then grab the hatchet? Got it. Let's get the dog hair. Make the little protective talisman for the sergeant. Oh, no, no, no. Where are you going? Um, what is that I need for you? A little morsel. And then let's throw it here. Grab our shears. Thank you, doggo. Got the talisman. Give this guy a talisman. Can I go in there to get my stuff? Ooh, nice. The teddy bear that we need. I feel bad taking his teddy bear and shoving it in here. That's kind of rude. And then we need honey and metamorphosis elixir. Okay, so we need to go to the fields first and then the swamp or wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta stop throwing a fit. That's another evil turkey. Heidi ho I'm afraid we're closed for the season. Close, but I need some of your honey right away. A shrill voice pierces the meadow and sends chills down your spine. Slave, where is my dinner? I order you to bring me the finest sunflowers. Uh, right away, my love. I think I had better have an audience with this queen myself. 
Are you sure you want to have a conversation with the queen? The regal insect looks down her curled nose at you scornfully. Do you think I simply give my honey, my carefully cultivated riches to just any commoner? My darling sweetheart, I offer you the finest meadow flowers. I hope you find these to your liking. Is this, is this marigold? You wax-brained fool. You know I despise that stuff. How many times must I repeat myself? Get out of my sight, all of you. She seems to be in a foul mood. Why does she treat you like this? Sometimes when she really gets her venom up, huh? A little bit of smoke and soothing herbs calms her right down. Ow! For our wonderful friend, we need to make that somewhere here. There we go. Thank you. Ah, the music seems stronger on the shore. Maybe that fool bard's hiding way out there, but, but, but I swim as well as hens fly. So we probably need that unveiling spell to see what's happening over here, but where is this tree thing? found him. Catch one of those squirrels. Oh, there's one. Okay, let's pop that down right there. Thank you, squirrel. So there you are. Oh, I lit him on fire. That's not nice. So we got that. Right now I want to go ah, back to the bear. Get away from the goblins. Oh! I was looking for this one. Nah, I didn't notice them before. <laughs> to the lakeshore path we go. <laughs> okay, so we have the honey and we need the metamorphosis elixir. Can we finally craft that. And so let's add it into the brewery. May not be the finest honey meat around, but hopefully that great raging galoot won't notice. <laughs> Ah, Captain, I brought you more honey mead. The bear swipes up the tankard in his massive paw, with his massive paw, and tosses the contents into a slavering maw without hesitation. He licks his chops, savoring the peculiar flavor. With a sudden jerk, he bears down on you with suspicion. Say, this tastes kind of funny. What did you do, soldier? It's an er, a new recipe. I thought you might enjoy something with a little more sting in it. Ah, you know I hate new things. I'll teach you to mess with my favorite brew, you hayseed. The bear is upon you with frightening speed. He raises the huge mace in his paw skyward, and you brace for the impact. With an equal measure of speed, the sergeant leaps between the crashing mace and your head. You peer through your fingers as a great clang resounds through the camp. The bear roars furiously as, he, as his blow is magically repelled from the sergeant's talisman. The mace goes spinning out of his paw and falls into the lake with a great splash. He gapes, dumbfounded at the sergeant that stands before him, completely unharmed. Ha! That'll teach you to pick on us, you big oaf. This has been a long time coming. The sergeant wags his finger at the bear. Who do you think you are, huh? You think you're so big and tough with your fancy feather hat and your big honkin' club? Well, look at you now. The camp soldiers gather to witness in stunned awe. Miraculously, the bear seems to shrink in the face of the sergeant's onslaught. If it was up to me, you'd be dishonorably discharged for disorderly conduct. You're a disgrace to the uniform. You're no captain of mine. With fear welling up in his eyes, the bear shrinks and shrinks until he is reduced to the size of a small cat. And another thing, I, uh, what's happening? <laughs> in place of the bear's drunken grimace is a stitched smile on a doll's grin. <laughs> of a doll's grin. Two button eyes stare back at the disapproving faces around the little plush toy. The sergeant takes a step back to reveal the small shape of a stuffed teddy bear where the brute once stood. Your transformative potion has finally done its work. Gee, uh, I guess I overdid it. He scratches his head in befuddlement, but seems genuinely relieved. Hey, Sarge, I guess that means you're in charge now, right? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess it does. Well, what are you standing for? The camp's a mess. Let's get to work. It's a little teddy bear. Far within the glassy surface of its button eyes, you can barely make out a tiny crimson flame, the trapped bear. Soul of a bear. This ought to be what the goat is after. I hope he's happy. Oh, we got the soul. Awesome. I'm glad we did this. That's great. Cool. So we just have to do one in the fields, one in the swamp, and one in the forest. Oh, he's returned. Kind of want to talk to the lady just to see what we're going to do with her. That'll probably be the last thing I do in this video because there's so much. <laughs> All right, missus. Oh, still my beating heart. Have you any news about my dear, sweet love? 
I found him at the carnival, but he's been mesmerized by the snake. Unless I can break the spell, no one in that carnival can leave. The snake? Say it isn't so. I have heard how he grants wishes, but only for a terrible price. Why would my love be so desperate as to consort to that charlatan? I haven't a clue, but he's stuck deep. The only thing I managed to get out of him was something about a mirror. Do you know anything about that? A, a mirror? It was the first gift he ever gave me. From inside her bodice, she produces a small cracked hand mirror. His song mentioned something about a wishing well, a moonlit swamp, and a pixie tree. Keep that mirror close. I'll seek out the missing shards and return them to you. Alrighty, well, we'll save this mission for next time. Looks like we have to run around the map again to find whatever everyone else needs to get those little shards. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!